Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon lesson. So glad that we were able to join each other in this way. And you've allowed me to come to where you are in this form in order to study God's word. Whether you're watching by yourself at a break at work, or maybe you're by yourself in your house, your apartment, maybe family, friends, maybe even your life group are gathered around together and you're spending time in God's word. If you have those around, if you have others around you, take time to discuss these things and, and see how you and as an individual and as a group can be better servants of God. Let's go to Psalm 97, Psalm 97. As we turn there, as whether you're using an electronic device or in your, your Bibles, as you turn there, we're going to read the entire 12 verses, and then we're going to break it up into sections and study it together. Psalm 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries all around. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of Yahweh, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the peoples see his glory. Let those be ashamed who serve graven images, who boast of idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion heard this and was glad, and the daughters of Judah have rejoiced because of your judgments, O Yahweh. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Hate evil. You who love the Lord, who keep the souls of his holy ones, he delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Be glad in the Lord, you righteous ones. And give thanks for the remembrance of his holy name. This is one of those psalms that maybe we need to read more often to remind us of who God is. I've titled this lesson, Be Glad God Reigns. I think we take it a number of ways. But why should we be glad that God reigns? That's the question that we have for today. That's what I want us to answer. So let's look at the first six verses because that answers the question why we should rejoice that God reigns. Because the many coastlands should be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries all around. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at his presence. In the presence of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness. And all the people see his glory. Be glad because he is good. No, he is the great king and ruler. He is the one in whom there is pure righteousness and pure justice. In other words, when God looks at the things that are going on in your life, when God judges you, when you stand before God, when the whole world stands before God, God will do what is right and what is just and what is fair. We live in a world where that's what we, we hear all the time. Something goes on and someone will get on camera and say, well, we just want justice. We want to be treated fairly and God will treat you with justice. God will treat you with righteousness. God will treat you fairly according to the standard of his word. He is always faithful. And so no one is going to get special treatment. They're all, we're all going to be laid beside what he has said and what he has done in Christ and whether we are in Christ or not. And that is the justice. That is the righteousness. That is the fairness of God. He's always fair and he has power over all his enemies. God is always victorious. When people stand against God, they may think they're winning, but they will not win. The theme of the book of Revelation is God wins. He is always victorious. All that was true then and all that is true now. Be glad. Rejoice. God reigns. So we should 
be embarrassed to serve idols. Look again at verses 7 through 9. Psalm 97, 7 through 9. Let those, let all those be ashamed who serve graven images, who boast of idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion heard this and was glad, and the daughters of Judah have rejoiced because of your judgments, O Lord, for you are Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. As this was written, the people may have been serving the Baals. They may have been serving the various gods of the Canaanites. Maybe they were serving the gods that represented or were represented by the stars. Whatever they were worshiping were, were idols. They were false gods. They were not true. And God says they should be embarrassed, ashamed that they are serving those things that are not really God at all, that are lifeless, that are worthless that are made up. It's easy for me, it's easy for you to look at what's going on then and say, well, man, those people, they were, they were superstitious when they worshiped those other gods. We understand that those gods aren't gods, but we have our own gods, our own idols. Maybe it's success or fame or notoriety. Maybe it's wealth. Maybe it's what we choose for entertainment. Maybe it's, maybe it's food. Maybe it's chemical addictions. Maybe it's sexuality. You can fill in the blank because anything that you put in, in the place of God in your life, anything that you turn to for comfort before you turn to God, anything that that becomes your happy place can be and might be and probably is your idol. The psalmist says, be embarrassed that you serve these other gods, that you serve these idols. Can we still blush? Can we still blush at the, the worldliness around us that pulls at us? Are you ashamed when we leave God? Rejoice, God reigns. Be embarrassed to serve idols. Hate evil if you love God. Look again at verses 10 and 11 of our psalm, Psalm 97 verses 10 and 11. Hate evil, you who love the Lord, who keeps the souls of his holy ones. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Hate evil. Hate is such a strong word. We teach our children not to hate. But yet God says, the psalmist says, to hate evil if you love God. Hate. Hate is more than dislike. Hate is to abhor. Hate is for it to literally turn your stomach. To make you sick on the inside because of what it is. Do we hate evil like God hates evil? And I know that we describe God as a loving God and he is. But the other side of that love is wrath and hate for evil. And his hate and his wrath for evil is, is not vindictive. It's out of disgust. Because he knows what evil, what sin does to those that he loves. Now we begin to understand. Can we learn to hate sin, hate evil, because of what it does to those that we love? It's not that we don't want people to enjoy their life and have fun and do what they think they want to do. 
but we hate what we see that doing to them. Because we know the danger and the destruction that comes with sin. That's the motivation against evil. Hating what it does to those that God loves and that we love. Do we hate sin like God hates sin? Are we rejoicing in evil? Or to rejoice in God. Verse 12. Be glad in the Lord, you righteous ones. And give thanks for the remembrance of his holy name. This psalm begins and ends with the idea of being glad, of rejoicing that God reigns. That he is God. Are we rejoicing? Let's rejoice. In fact, the... Paul writes it this way in Philippians, verse 4 of chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say it again, rejoice. The truth is, we have so much to be glad in because of God. The creation that he has made for us, the, the family that surrounds us, the spiritual family that surrounds us, his word that he has given us to show us how we should live, Salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. God is righteous. He is just. He is the great king. Let's be embarrassed when we serve other things. Let's hate evil for what it does to those we love. And let's rejoice in the Lord always. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for the blessings that you give us. Father, I thank you for your love. And Father, help us to see your love, to see your grace, to see what you have done for us and who you are, and rejoice and be glad because of you. Father, help us to develop not a hatred of sinners, but a hatred of sin. Because we see what sin does to the lives of your creation. And help us to find the way to express that so the world knows we're, we're not being judgmental. But we're being compassionate and caring and loving. Even if they disagree with our stand. May they see that we approach them out of love and concern. Because you sent your son into the world because you loved us. And not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Father, help that be our focus and our motivation. Father, we know that you will deal right with everyone. And Father, we thank you for the righteousness that is ours in Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to join you as we spend time together. If you have questions or thoughts about the things that we have talked about today, please feel free to, to contact me. Maybe talk about them in your group that's with you or spend time talking about that. And if there are more questions, please feel free to, to ask me. I'd be happy to help you in your journey with God. Thank you again. I do look forward to being with you. And until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.